So today we will discuss the derivation of IS curve. You know that IS curve that shows goods market equilibrium. Goods market equilibrium. And what is this goods market equilibrium? You know very well. Goods market equilibrium is a situation where your aggregate demand equals aggregate supply. And you know that aggregate demand consists of two things, especially in a two sector economy. That is consumption plus investment. And aggregate supply is nothing but income. And income is used for two things. That is consumption and saving. So when you say aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply, it simply means that your consumption plus investment equals saving plus uh, consumption plus saving. Since consumption is on both sides, we cancel it out and therefore we get I is equal to S. So goods market equilibrium simply means a situation where the total investment in the economy becomes equal to total savings or aggregate investment is equal to aggregate saving. And then when you have this condition, you can say that the aggregate demand, aggregate supply equilibrium exists. So macroeconomic equilibrium, simply the equilibrium between aggregate and aggregate supply or good smart equilibrium is said to exist when saving becomes equal to investment. Now, come to the uh, specifications of this investment and uh, saving. Now, now you know that saving, saving is a function of income. Simply saving is a function of income because we save out of our income. And we know that saving has a counterpart that's nothing but consumption. So consumption function is written as this A plus BY, where B is marginal propensity to consume. Okay, and we know that marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save is equal to one. Therefore, uh, is equal to one. So the, therefore one minus MPZ is equal to MPS, marginal propensity to save. So when you say the counterpart of this function, we go like this, saving is equal to, here it is, plus A. So we write it as minus A plus, we take one minus B, or minus B is nothing but MP, yes, and Y. Or you can write it as minus A plus MPS, MPS, you can write S yes for MPS and then Y. So this is simply the saving function. This is a saving function. So actually the saving function is uh, also uh, derived from the uh, consumption function because saving is a counterpart of consumption. Now let us uh, consider the investment. You know that investment is a function of is a function of interest rate. Investment is a function of interest rate. As interest rate increases, investment falls, and as interest rate falls, investment increases. There is inverse or negative relation between 
interested and investment. So we have seen two sides. S side we have seen that is minus A plus S into Y and we have seen this investment side also. Now we are going to derive the uh, say uh, derive this or IS curve. Now you must understand that IS curve, the derivation of IS curve can be done in many ways. Many books have many type of illustrations regarding the IS curve, but I am using an IS curve derivation uh, given by uh, Lavasik and Ramban in their very famous book or books on uh, macroeconomics. So this is a very simple uh, IS curve derivation, I think. So here we have a, uh, four panels in the in, in, in a figure. So in the first panel, I'm going to show the saving function. So this is a first panel A. So here I will show the saving function. And uh, you know that uh, in the case of the saving function, along the horizontal axis, we show income. This is the x-axis, but we are showing income here. And here we are showing the saving. And saving actually does not start from zero. It starts from a positive region. So this is a saving curve. Okay, this is saving. Now, in the panel B of this figure, I am going to show you the saving investment equality. And for that, this is origin. Here along the x-axis, I am taking investment. And along the y-axis, I am taking saving. To show the equality between saving and investment, I am drawing a 45 degree line. This is a 45 degree line. Okay. Now, this is a B panel of this figure, B, panel B. Now, just below this panel B, I am drawing another figure where along x-axis I am showing investment and y-axis I am showing interest rate. Okay, this is a panel C. Of this figure. Now here in the panel D, I am going to derive the IS curve. Panel D, I am going to derive the IS curve. And here I am showing income because actually this income, horizontal axis income comes from here. So I am showing income here, horizontal axis income. And vertical axis, y axis, I am showing the interest rate. Interest rate, okay. Now, this, this uh, the panel C actually shows investment function, negative relationship between interest rate and investment, okay. Now, I start with a level of income. Let it be y zero. So first I have started with a level of income, Y zero. Correspondingly, I have a saving. See the saving is S zero. And I am taking this saving to this S zero. Correspondingly, I have an investment. I zero. I am taking this investment to this I zero. And very less investment, I am relating it with a high interest rate. I zero. I am taking this I zero investment and Y zero income here. So this is one combination, Y0, I0. So this combination, I am marking it. Combination 
y0 i0 so i am plotting these two things y0 comes from here i0 comes from here okay now i am taking another level of income of y1 correspondingly i have a rate a saving level s0 s1 it be s1 I am taking S1 here and equality with investment, let it be I1 and I am taking investment here, I1 and I am connecting it with a lower interest rate, small letter I1. Now what I am going to do is that I will take this Y1 and I1 to this point. So I am getting another point here correspondingly Y1, I1. Now let us take another income Y2. Corresponding, you have and saving S2. Connect this saving with this here. I2. And take this investment to this position and connect it with a low, lower interest rate, I2. Take this lower interest rate here and take this y2 here. So here, this is negative relation. So that it does mean that this is an investment function curve. Here also you are getting IS curve. This IS curve. So see, IS curve is a is a curve which joins together the points of equilibrium or we joins together different combinations of income and interest rate, which make goods market equilibrium. So you, when you have this point on IS curve here, Y0, I1, correspondingly, you have an equilibrium here between aggregate demand and aggregate supply, or in other ways, saving and investment. When you have another point or a combination of income and interest rate, let it be Y1 and I1, then you have corresponding another point of equilibrium between the C is equal to Y here. Here also, you have an equilibrium between AC is equal to Y, or that is goods market equilibrium. Correspondingly, you have another point on this IS curve. Simply speaking, IS curve shows various combinations of interest rate and levels of income, which make goods market equilibrium. So this is a derivation of IS curve.